Shalom, Rabbi Goodman. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. And Mazel Tov to all of our confirmands, to Julia, to the Kiros family. It's really, it, it feels so good to have so much to celebrate together today. I hear some thumping of the Simon Tov Mazel Tov dance going on <laughs> upstairs um, as Eli is one of the the man. So I think his brothers are doing a little horror. Maybe he's up on a chair. But I'm going to give uh, a little teaching today about patience. And it might be that you're like me and trying to find patience um, during these trying times. I've come to believe that one of the secrets of life, actually, is knowing when to be patient and when to be impatient. Each does have its moment. Each has its place. Patience and impatience have roles to play in politics, in family life, God knows, in learning, in business, and yes, even in prayer. Each is necessary in order to find our way to health. Each is required to find our way to advancement and accomplishment. Each is needed to find our way even to peace. The Book of Bamidbar, now begun, is a study in patience and impatience. It means in a wilderness. The experience of 40 years of wandering in the wilderness between Egypt and the land of Israel was an experiment in the discipline of patience and the discipline in impatience. Everyone is tested. Moses was both patient and impatient. He struck the rock as he had broken the tablets but he was also discerning in judgment and deliberate in delegation and remarkably patient with a constantly quetchy and sometimes rebellious people. Moses is the shepherd of his flock who knows when to give them time to rest and when to urge them on and drive them forward in their journey. The Israelites were also both patient and impatient. Would the manna fall tomorrow? Would there be enough for everyone? Would the pillar of mist be wide enough to cool us off under the hot desert sun? And would the pillar of fire be warm enough to see us through the long, cold nights? And yes, God too was both patient and impatient. This Friday morning, this Shavuot morning, when we stand before the open ark, we will declare God's self-description as found in Exodus 34. Adonai, Adonai, El Rachum Vechanun, the eternal, the eternal God is merciful and gracious, Erech Apaim, endlessly patient. Imagine just how patient God has to be. It almost reads like a stand up comedy routine. God, who is everywhere, sees how we beat each other up over where one thin borderline is drawn. God, who is eternal, watches how we hold grudges, sometimes for generations, when a relative arrives a little late, or how businesses and workplaces fall apart and go under when we hold a grudge because someone was either too slow in um, following instructions or the like. It's almost laughable. How patient must God be with we who fall short of our potential again and again and again? And so when we say, El Rachum van Rachum, El El Rachum Vachanun Erech Apaim, that God is endlessly patient then we should also hear those words as a reminder for ourselves. If we are created in the image of God, we ought to strive to be patient as God is patient. Because we are created B'Tselem Elohim in the image of God, we must be patient as God is patient. The highest way to live is to bring the divine virtues down to earth through us. So we must become disciplined in our attribute of patience. How do we cultivate this attribute of patience? The Hebrew word for patience is savlanut. The same root gives rise to words that mean to suffer, sevel, and burdens are sivlot. 
We learn from this that finding patients is often an unpleasant experience. We should expect patients to be hard. It often means that we must bear some kind of burden. A sablan is one who carries stuff, someone who is a porter, who carries things from place to place. Sablanut, therefore, is not only patience in waiting, but also forbearance in the sense of bearing a burden until the appropriate time comes, if it ever comes at all, to set something down. The burden might take the form of annoyance or anger, frustration, or even embarrassment. Savlanut is the ability to hang on and to hold up the weight, the weight of it all, for longer than we wish we had to, but not for longer than we can. Toronto-born Alan Marinus of the Musar Institute in Vancouver teaches that the real root of impatience is the erroneous belief that we are the masters of our fates. The truth is otherwise. We are actually wired into all kinds of larger circuits and systems, from the molecular to the social to the spiritual. And it's an illusion to think that we control very many of the factors which shape our lives. Least of all can we expect to rule the timetable according to which our lives unfold. This is usually the cause of our impatience, that we believe we are the masters of our destiny. With humility instead, <clears throat> we must understand our rightful place in the universe. And then we can discover deep stores of patience. We don't have to get all worked up when things don't go the way we wish they would. Really, why should they? Considering how small we are and how many other factors are at play in making this world go round. When we are so focused on what is right in front of our noses, we often lose sight of the foundational truth that our lives are wonderfully and infuriatingly bound up with grand schemes of time and space, spirit and matter moved by human hands and by the forces of physics. They are, things are pushed and pulled in ways beyond our grasp. Case in point, coronavirus. Case in point, a global pandemic. I, for one, admit I am zoomed out. I want to return to our sanctuaries. I want to carry our Torah scroll in our arms I want to wrap our bat mitzvah Julia in her talit. And with the permission of our confirmands, I want to place my hands gently on their shoulders when I ask for God's blessing upon them. I want to meet and greet you, dear congregants and guests, perhaps not with a Shabbat Shalom handshake, but at least with, without the screen between us. But it is not time yet. And so we have to be patient. You may have heard yesterday's announcement from President Trump that American houses of worship are essential. I agree. This is the truth. If there's ever a truth that I know, it's the truth that synagogues are essential. We depend on all our houses of faith, synagogues, churches, mosques, and temples to be the places of prayer and comfort, of learning and uplift, of celebration and commemoration of connection with the divine and with one another in sacred community. Yes, absolutely. We are as essential as we ever were, but even more essential, our Jewish tradition teaches us, is life itself. And so the URJ, the Union for Reform Judaism, put out a swift statement saying, that houses of worship are essential. While we long to gather in person, we believe that there is no higher value than pikuach nefesh, saving a life. We are entrusted with the holy responsibility of being God's partners in that work. And so the Reform Jewish movement will continue to look to the wisdom of medical professionals to guide us on when reopening our synagogues can be done safely and in keeping with our values. And closer to home, you may not have heard yet that on the letterhead of the Vad HaRabanim of Toronto, 
on the, um, the Board of Orthodox Rabbis of Toronto, a letter was written to Premier Ford, and I'll only read an excerpt of it. It might surprise you. As representatives of the Orthodox Jewish community of Greater Toronto, we must write to convey our dismay at the unjustified limitation imposed on our constitutional rights to assemble and to, and to practice our faith. Our God-given rights and traditions of communal prayer spanning thousands of years are guaranteed by our Charter of Rights and Freedoms not to be unjustifiably infringed. We have watched as you have unilaterally and arbitrarily declared faith groups to be shuttered as non-essential while liquor stores, grocery stores, and marijuana shops remain open. There is no constitutional right to buy liquor and marijuana, but there is a constitutional right to worship and to assemble to practice one's faith. We were told that it is necessary to shut down society to flatten the curve and to protect hospitals from being overrun. That has already been thankfully achieved. Yet we find ourselves as faith groups still under disproportionate restrictions while society around us begins to reopen. People are per permitted to gather at golf courses, beaches, stores in numbers greater than five, but not in prayer. This is unacceptable. This is just an excerpt of the letter that I'm sharing with you now. And I appreciate that our Orthodox brothers and sisters who uh, take the practice not to come online for Shabbat and Yom Tov. I, I respect that, I appreciate it, I even admire it. And, and so they feel this impatience to gather in person because they so miss one another. And Shavuot is coming and they want to gather in their sanctuaries again. I can understand that. Now let me be clear, there are many Orthodox rabbis in the city who do not sign on to this sentiment and they are making careful decisions together with their boards to guide their own congregations um, in health, in good health, please God, and carefully. It is my prayer for those who did sign this letter and for um, any uh, circles of ultra-Orthodox Jews in our city who have the same wishes. It's my prayer for them that they would remain safe that they would continue good practice like holding the minyanim on the balconies of their homes in Montreal. You may have read about that. It's a beautiful image and it works and it's healthy and safe for everyone. Even the neighbors seem to appreciate the beautiful melodies. And maybe there could be a minyan with safe distancing in a park somewhere for Shavuot. Be creative, yes and celebrate, yes, and be safe and healthy most of all. This is my prayer. So we at Holy Blossom, we're gonna hang on. We're gonna be patient. Uh, I hope you read the joint uh, letter that came from our executive director, Ron Polster, and our temple president, Ava Rosen, and myself, uh, explaining that health and safety is always our first priority in making these decisions with the Temple Board, and that we will continue to be creative with online alternatives. Um, for more than a month now, uh, we've been the rabbis and cantors, including um, cantor David Rosen, our incoming senior cantor, we've been meeting to plan, and it's actually quite exciting to imagine what can be. And we will continue to communicate with you regularly, so nothing will take you by surprise. You'll always be well informed as these decisions are made with patience. The very first piece of wisdom in Pirkei Avot, which we study at this time of year during the counting of the Omer, is that we have to be patient in judging, in discerning, in making decisions of judgment. And this speaks volumes for the importance of patience and decision-making. Pirkei Avot goes on to say, do not be contemptuous of any person and don't remove yourself from anything for every person has its moment and everything has its place.
at this challenging time when our patience is wearing thin, when our sense of calm is being tested, and we feel we are somehow put on trial, let us use the Shabbat and the Shalom that comes with it as a time to restore those stores of patience, as a time to take a deep breath and count to 10 as we tell our kids, or maybe count even higher as the ver opening verses of this book of Bamibar instruct us to count with attention, with care, with patience, one by one by one by one. And I'll conclude with this old song of James Taylor. I wonder if you know it. It's called The Secret of Life. I began by saying the secret of life is knowing when to be patient and when to be impatient. And there is a time for impatience too, by the way. I've come to appreciate that. But JT says, the secret of life is enjoying the passage of time. Any fool can do it. There ain't nothing to it. Nobody knows how we got to the top of the hill. But since we're on our way down, we might as well enjoy the ride. It's okay to feel afraid, but don't let that stand in your way. Now, the thing about time is that time isn't really real. It's just your point of view. So how does it feel for you? Einstein said we could never understand it all. Planet spinning through space, that smile upon your face, welcome to the human race some kind of lovely ride, sliding down, gliding down. Try not to try too hard. Isn't it a lovely ride? See me sliding down, gliding down. Try not to try too hard. It's just a lovely ride. The secret of life is enjoying the passage of time. Shabbat Shalom.